This video contains footage and statements from players around the Division community. Thank you to everyone who took the time to respond to my Twitter and I hope you enjoy the video. This is the tale of a weapon that completely changed the Division 2 forever. This weapon may have been the most coveted weapon in the game, but it also had the hardest challenge in the game standing between your agent and their prize. That challenge, of course, is the Operation Dark Hours Raid, the very first raid to come to the Division franchise. That prize, that weapon, is the one and only Eagle Bear. To even attempt to talk about the Eagle Bearer, the very first raid exotic to come to the Division 2, we must first talk about the world's first raid race. The previous statement works on two levels, as I'm about to explain. Operation Dark Hours was released on May 16th, 2019, and much of the player base was tuned in to compete or watch the community attempt the very first raid to come to the Division 2. So this day was a huge day for the Division community, with the very first raid dropping, as well as the very first raid race, and the chase for the first raid exotic all happening at the same time. Many teams attempted the raid, but if you guessed that huge community figureheads such as MarcoStyle, Wids, and their clan, Positive Gamers, or POG, would come out victorious, you would be correct. Guys, go, 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 go! Come on! OB! Yes, got him. That was it? Yeah. Yes. Seven men, the boys! Yeah, boys. Woo! It's done. Finally. Yeah, it's done, dude. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy, shit. Holy fucking shit. Let's go, baby. No, I got a fast grab. What the fuck? Yeah. Four is dead. Free, 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 free. Guys, go, 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 go. Come on! OB. Please. Yes, got him all. Stay alive. Yes. Yeah, Woo. Woo. It's oh, done. Finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Fast travel, Ranger. It's time. Oh, Kill it. Oh, oh my god, dude. <laughs> It took Marco Style and Positive Gamers over five whole hours to complete the raid for the first time, which is about how long it took me to. Uh, uh, never mind. I couldn't think of a funny joke. The community was completely and absolutely on fire in this moment. This was an amazing moment, and congratulations were in order for the winning team. This elite group of division agents were rewarded with their names being imprinted on a plaque in the White House for all agents to see. However, there was still more to be done in the Dark Hours raid. There was still the mysterious weapon from the trailer waiting to be discovered somewhere within the Washington National Airport. The Dark Hours raid took the Division franchise to new heights in terms of viewership and coverage. In all the excitement of the world's first raid encounter, the clan Positive Gamers neglected to stay in the raid and search for the raid exotic. As it turns out, the Eagle Bear exotic assault rifle drops from the raid chest, available at the very end of the raid after defeating the Razorback. As we know, acquiring exotics in the Division 2 isn't always as easy as point gun at the enemy, enemy die, gun drop. No. Sometimes in the Division 2, you have to go on a hunt to satisfy the requirements to get the exotic to drop. And at the end of it all, conditions met, hoops jumped through, it could all just come down to chance, whether you get it or not. So we get that the gun is mysterious, and it would take a great deal of effort for you to go get it, but we should talk about why you would want this gun in the first place. First things first, I'm going to talk about the weapon, pre-nerf. The Eagle Bear came with a few really, really good talents. The first talent that the gun comes with is called Eagle's Strike. Eagle's Strike reads, Accuracy increases as you continuously fire up to plus 30%. Headshot kills Grint, the tenacity buff, for 15 seconds. The strength of tenacity is increased by 1% for body shots and 5% for headshots. Tenacity reads, 40-80% to 80 of damage taken is delayed until the buff expires. 
All of the total delayed damage is reduced for each enemy killed while the buff is active, up to 100% with 3 kills. The gun also came with a holstered talent that grants 10% bonus armor when firing a weapon. Rest in peace to holstered talents, am I right guys? In addition to all this, this weapon is super unique in the fact that it is the only assault rifle in the game that can get up to 60 bullets in a magazine. So now let's talk about the methods for acquiring the weapon. There have been multiple reports of the weapon dropping from the bosses themselves, but the chance of that happening was very 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 small. It's difficult to imagine getting into the raid for the first time and the raid exotic dropping from the very first boss you kill. Why would you even finish the raid? Obviously that's a joke. But it is possible, and these people who responded to my Twitter have attested to it. Some people got it from Boomer, which of course is the first raid boss you kill, and some even got it from Weasel, which I think is honestly kind of crazy. But I want to establish that the gun was very difficult to get. How do you put yourself in the best position possible to get the gun though? Fortunately for us, there's a way to reduce that soul crushing RNG. After each encounter, there are some interesting looking keys to be found somewhere in the room. Acquiring these keys may make you wonder where the key fits. Is it a door? Maybe. Do they go to a chest at the end of the raid after defeating the final boss? Nah, that seems crazy. I suppose you'll just have to find out though. So raid key number one. Right after defeating Boomer, there will be a passenger waiting area. To the left of this area, there will be a generator. To the right, a food court corner with a button. Press the generator and the food court button at the same time to unlock the food court corner and the raid box number one will be inside. Raid key number two. Right after defeating Weasel, after you go down a rope and into a courtyard, it will be behind this door. Raid key number three. Right after defeating Weasel yet again. After raid key number two, go down a little ways through a contaminated hallway. You will see a double door room on your right. Throw a grenade into one of the windows up and above the doors to claim raid box number three. Raid key number four, and you have to do this one before keys number two and three. After defeating Weasel, once you get into the courtyard of raid key number two, rush past the enemies of raid key number three and into the baggage claim area. In the back of this baggage claim area is an elevator with a timer on it. You need to rush towards this elevator before it closes to claim raid box number four. Raid key number five. Right before starting the boss fight for the Razorback, instead of taking a right to the drop down area, go left and you will find raid box number 5 in a corner. So once you have gathered all the keys on your way through the raid, you may be wondering what you might be using them for. Are there 5 individual objects that need to be opened? Maybe, but actually no. After the end of the Razorback fight, which is the final boss of the raid, there is a chest in the airplane through the shipping container. There you will find the chest, but it is only available to those who grabbed all 5 keys throughout the raid. This chest carried with it a chance to get the raid exotic, the Eagle Bearer. And let me just say, for those who were lucky enough to get the gun to drop, the reactions were pretty dang crazy. <laughs> I know where this box is, I've seen this so many times. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf, I swear to god I'm sh shaking like a shit in dog guys. I got the Eagle Bearer! Oh my fucking god! Oh. <laughs> no. I know that the Eagle Bearer is super rare, and many people still do not have their hands on the weapon. You can blame RNG for that. However, the while the Eagle Bearer was best in slot for a long time, Massive decided to nerf the game's rarest weapon to the dismay and disappointment of the player base. Unfortunately for us, the community, the Eagle Bear also did not become more obtainable, again to the dismay of the players yet again. Many people argued for the inclusion of the weapon to the world loot pools or even the discovery mode where you are allowed to matchmake to find agents to do the raid with since not everyone has 7 friends they can grab and go to run the raid. Many people argued that since the gun had such high requirements to be obtained, it doesn't make much sense to nerf the gun into the ground as they were proposing. Creators and community members are still imploring Massive to consider adding the weapon to other loot pools such as the discovery mode for dark hours or even the targeted assault rifle loot pool. Legend says they, they are still arguing on Twitter to this day. Anyways, Massive pushed through with the nerf and the rarest gun in the game received a 15% damage reduction which was aimed at quote unquote bringing the gun more in line with other assault rifles. 
While I understand the need for balance within the game, the shock factor you get when you finally get the eagle bear to drop is just kind of gone. By nerfing the weapon, you don't really get the same reaction that you would have before since the gun isn't really super special anymore in terms of raw base damage. The gun still holds a large amount of significance, seeing that of course it is the original raid exotic from the Dark Hours raid and it is a one of a kind. That much cannot be taken away from it. That's just my humble opinion though. For those who are still trying to this day to get the Eagle Bear, I imagine when it finally drops that moment would still be pretty special regardless of the state of the gun. The Division 2 has had its share of problems, and to be honest, every game has its issues. The Division 2 got a lot of things right, and the Eagle Bearer Raid Exotic was definitely one of them. Guides for how to get the gun cropped up almost as soon as the raid was beaten, and the gun remains one of the most iconic weapons in the Division franchise. For a good long while, the Eagle Bearer was one of the must-have weapons in the player's loadouts, in both PvE and PvP. Even after the nerf, the gun still performs well in many many loadouts in different situations and still offers some pretty sweet bonuses. The Dark Hours Raid remains one of the most played pieces of content in the entire game, which is absolutely crazy considering the raid came out almost 3 years ago. Considering the outflow of support for the raid and the raid exotic on Twitter, and in the moments as characterized by the world's first raid race, I really really hope that Massive will continue to add to its catalog of successful raid releases and bring in a new raid with a new update that should be revealed soon. The Division 2 can take notes from other MMO shooters such as Destiny. Destiny has such an immense amount of special and completely crazy weapons that the player base and community come together to hunt for and find in, in terms of puzzles, raids, you name it, Destiny has it. I really, really, really think that The Division 2 could take a lot of inspiration from the way that exotics are handled in other MMO shooters. But anyways, this has been the tale of the Eagle Bearer, a weapon that changed The Division 2 forever. Let me know what you thought of the Eagle Bear and the Dark Hours Raid. Are there any other significant community events that you would like to see me cover? How did you feel when you first got the Eagle Bear to drop after completing the Dark Hours Raid? This video took an immense amount of work to script and edit and release to you guys, so I sincerely hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. With that, I will leave you. Delta out. Peace!